Hey everyone, John here from the Deers Embroidery Legacy and in this episode I'm going to do something really fun. I'm going to do something special for two of my favorite people on the entire planet. So stay tuned, you're going to want to see this. <laughs> First off, I want to thank you guys for watching, and if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button, it really does help us out. Also hit that bell and you'll be notified every time we release a new video. Now, here's how this story plays out. My beautiful and talented daughter Bess Skyped me letting me know that my grandsons, Noah and Eli, are going to a ninja boot camp in a couple weeks time. Now, if that isn't cool enough, I have to do what every self-respecting grandfather, or papa as I'm known, would do, and I have to create something that is going to make them stand out and get excited about this. So I'm gonna digitize a design, put it on a t-shirt, and we'll have them go to boot camp prepared for fun. Well, I've chosen my artwork for this project, and I think it's pretty cool. I made sure I got the appropriate commercial license to do this. Uh, I'm going to do this about 8 inches high on the front of a kid's t-shirt, so it's going to be pretty large. And I also don't want it to be stitch intensive, because obviously putting a lot of stitches on t-shirt material can cause a lot of puckering and stuff like that. So I could do an applique, but I think I'm going to do this as mylar showing through. I do have a density setting for mylar that tends to launder pretty well and it will actually hold up for the period that my grandsons are going to be ninjas. So we're going to get this underway. I'm going to do it with a loose mylar fill showing through and uh, it's going to be pretty cool. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just go into my scale that I want to be at to digitize and I think I'm going to do this at a 3 to 1 scale so that uh, I can see a larger portion of the design. Uh, this is a pretty simple logo. Normally if I'm doing detailed work I'm at a 6 to 1 scale, but I like to stay consistent between the two. Now the first thing I'm going to do is the mylar. So let's do a digitized close shape. I'll do a fill stitch and I have it set to a tatami. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right in here and I'm going to come inside of this object ever so slightly because I am going to put a border on this afterwards. So I can come all the way down to here and then I'll just switch to a curve and I'll just start curving around the outside and trying to be fairly exact and leaving an equal amount of space all the way around. I'm not coming right to the edge of the artwork because I am going to have a satin border that is going to cover around the outside of where the mylar is going to be. So I do want to try to be as precise as possible going around here straight going to curves and I'm literally just drawing the outline of the inside of the bottom of this ninja so now I'm coming back around and this will be a straight point going to curves going to straight and I'm just going to come right over here and I know it's going to be a closed shape so that's the last point I really need let's hit enter now I can see that I have a fill that is selected and I'm going to go in and change this to 1.2 millimeters and let's get rid of that underlay in there. So now I have a underlay stitch that has disappeared and I'll be able to see the actual mylar pressing through. Now I'm going to do my border around the outside. So here I'm going to come and do a digitized open shape and I'm going to choose a satin stitch. I have it set at 1.5 millimeters with an inset offset. That actually sounds strange, but it is an offset that's uh, you know going from the outside in. It's not centered. And I'm going to start right here and do a straight, straight, and curve all the way around right to this point here. Hit the enter. And if I look at how that generated, I have a nice satin stitch. It's only 1.5 millimeters, so it's going to be a thin border, but it's going to look nice and crisp and clean. Now I'm going to go back to my single run and I'm going to put a connecting stitch between these two objects so that there's no jumps and trims. I'll go back over to a satin outline and now I'm just going to come here, do a straight, a straight, and now I'll curve around the outside. Now I am following directly on the line. So I'm following on the outside of the line, doing curves all the way around here, narrowing up my inputs where the curves get a little more defined and then I can loosen the space between the nodes as I go forward. So where the curves are kind of, you know, 
uh, more curved, I guess you would say. There I put in more points, and where they ease up, then I can kind of let my foot off the throttle and not put nearly as many points down. When I get to here, I need a straight point, back to curves. Here I need a straight point, back to curves. And I'll just continue all the way around the outside and trying to be as exact as possible. I see one point there that I'm not 100% happy with. That showed me that I did need to put in an extra point. And keep in mind, nobody is ever going to see the artwork, but this is for two very special people. So I want it to be as good as it can possibly be. And that looks pretty cool. Now, because this was too small to really have a fill show through, I'm going to go to my digitize uh, blocks and I'm going to choose a satin block so let's choose a satin and here I'm just going to go right from here and do these points kinda like this and finish this one piece off just like that and hit enter so that looks pretty good now I'm gonna do the other piece and I'll do the large fill around the outside I'll kind of replicate that same effect so let's go back to the previous view I'm going to come right here, go to digitize close shape. I want to do a tatami stitch and I'm going to start inset a little bit from the outside of the black because I know I'm going to have a satin around the outside edge. So I'm just going to come all the way around, put curve inputs all the way through here. And then this one will be a straight, curve, straight, 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 curve, straight, and then I can pan over, come all the way to this point here, go straight, straight, and come around the inside, straight point, back to curves, here I'm going to curve all the way around as the curves start to become a little bit more defined. I need more points. That's going to be a straight curve, 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 straight, and then curve, curve, and it's going to close the shape when I hit the enter, and that one's now done. Now I can select that. I'm going to change that to 1.2 millimeters as well. That's going to be a travel on edge. Let's get rid of the underlay, and now that one is done as well. Now I just have to choose the place that I want to start this object. So I could start, I know it's going to use a closed shape, so I'm going to go back to digitize closed shape. Actually, I forgot to do one thing, guys. Before we go any further, let's select that last object that I just did, and let's make sure that we digitize a hole on the inside. I'm going to turn off the true view, and I'm just going to come all the way into here, come around right to here, to here, around to this side, and I know when I hit enter twice, I now have a open area for the ninja's mask. Okay, now that I have that done, I can start doing the satin stitch around the outside, so I'm going to go back to a digitized closed shape. I'm going to make sure I go to outlines, I'm going to choose my satin, it does have an offset there, and let's just go right over to here. I'm going to choose this point. Uh, it doesn't really matter where I choose. Let's go right here. I'm going to go straight to straight. And then I can start to put my curves down. Going all the way around the outside. That's going to be a straight curve straight. And then I need a straight, 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 straight straight, curve, straight. Digitizing is all about repetition when doing nodes. It is just getting used to whether you're putting a left or a right click down as you're actually creating objects to define straight points or curve points. And once you get the hang of it, it's just the same thing over and over again. The good thing is every design is unique and different. So I know this is going to close the shape. That one's done. Okay, now for this one here, I'm going to change the offset back to normal and I'm going to come a little bit on the inside and I will just go all the way around. I know that generally when I do an offset on a hole that's been carved, 
uh, it will not give me the offset in the direction I want. And this is just, again, some trial and error in, losing, in learning your software. So now that those are done, I can do these pieces. And if I look at this, I know this is going to be too small for an actual fill stitch, but I think that this one would be okay. So I'm going to go to digitize close shape. Let's do this object right here. And I'm going to, again, come on the inside of the offset. So this way it'll just be kind of like this. It's going to be a very small fill. And let's grab that fill. Let's change that to 1.2 millimeters. Hit enter. Make sure that we get rid of the underlay. And then all I have to do is go back to a digitized closed shape. Go back to an outline satin stitch. This time I will go to the offset. And it should give me an offset from the outside in as long as I am going the right direction. And again, just have to come close and hit enter. And that actually looks pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go now to digitize blocks. And I'm just going to use a satin stitch with a digitize blocks. And I'm going to come here. I'm going to make sure that I exaggerate that ever so slightly. Hit enter. Now I have those two pieces. Now, what I can do that will make this even easier is grab these last objects that I just did, because there's no reason for me to digitize those over again. Let's duplicate those. So now I have them duplicated. So I'm going to select those three pieces. And now that I have them selected, I can move those over so that it's going to be like this. And if I'm really not happy with those two because they've kind of changed, I can flip those back over the other direction and that way it looks the same. So it actually was pretty easy to line those up and for the most part our ninja is done. So now we'll just go in and we'll quickly do our lettering. I'm just going to go to my 6 to 1 scale this time. So I'm digitizing at the scale that I normally like to digitize at. And it's nice and big. And what I'm going to do is I am going to do, let's just say, uh, an outline. So I don't necessarily want to have mylar in this, but I'll just do a outline. And for that, I'm going to do digitize close shape. Let's come here to outlines. I'm going to make this one a little bit wider. Let's go two millimeters. I'm going to keep that offset. And I'll just start right here, do a point, point, point. If I hold the control key down, it'll give me perfectly straight objects. Then right to here, point, point. And I know when I hit enter, it's going to close the shape. So there is number one. And then let's just repeat the process. I'm going to do a number two here. And make sure that I put that point down and this point down. And then I know I already did the first end, so there's no reason to redo it. I'm just going to grab that one and duplicate it. And now I can go back to one-to-one, -to -one, just move this one over quickly. I find that it moves a little faster when I'm at a, you know, I guess a greater scale. Six to one takes a little bit too long to do. Just make sure that is nice and exactly where I want it. Let's go back to this point here. And let's finish the next one back to digitize close shape. And let's do this object here. Hold the control key down so I know that it is giving me perfectly straight 90 degree angles. And there's straight, straight, curve, 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 and here. And then control key down here to control key right to there and hit enter. And then let's just take this one here. Now there is a method to my madness. Just so you know, I am going to make some adjustments so that that won't bleed together quite as large as that. Let's go here. And let's go right to here. Back to control. Back to this one here. Hit enter. And now same thing right here. Let's do one point here, here, here. And hit enter. Now that I did not like, so let's try that one more time. I'm going to try this instead, see if we can trick it. Sometimes if the software does something that we're not too happy with, we can trick it a little bit. So there is my objects. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a point right in here, and that way I can see exactly where I want that lettering to be. And then I'm going to take these letters starting here, and let's make those letters a bit larger. 
just uh, let's go let's say a hundred and forty percent so we'll do one four zero and hit enter so now those are larger letters and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to move these inside and see if we can't actually have a little bit of fun with placing these and making this design a little bit larger so let's go here let's bring this one over keep our spacing consistent and let's go over to this one and let's bring this one over I'm going to actually bring that A over right now so I'll grab just the two pieces of the A and I'll bring this one over and this way I have adjusted my spacing it's going to look clear and they are definitely going to know that these boys are ninjas so let's just grab that N come right over here and that way my spacing looks pretty consistent right there and I think that looks good so now the ninjas are in place now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all those colors let's move them up a little bit to reduce the spacing and now all I have to do is put the boys names underneath now with regards to underlay I'm going to make sure that I grab those pieces and I'm going to go to my stitch effects get rid of that underlay I just need to have a edge run so let's put an edge run around those instead and then I'm going to make sure that I get rid of that so I only want an edge run underlay and I'm going to see what the underlay is for these it's a center run which is fine because they are so small so if I get rid of the artwork now and take a look at my ninja he's looking pretty cool I think that's going to look great we're just going to add the boys names I'll send them over to my daughter Beth and she'll run them and hopefully she'll send me a pic because I'm looking really forward to seeing how these shirts turn out. Hey, James here from the Embroidery Legacy. I'm actually gonna step in and take over this part of the video and run the sample on these shirts for Noah and Eli. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll let you know what they think.
I bought Eli and Noah's brand new shirts, and I'm gonna go surprise them upstairs. Papa told me you guys are going to ninja school soon. Ninja class, not ninja school. Oh, ninja class, all right. Well, are you excited? Yeah. Are you excited, Eli? Yep. Well, guess what? Okay. Papa made you guys some brand new shirts for your <gasps> class. Ninja shirts? Oh, what do you my think? goodness. Thanks. You like them? Yeah. What does it say on there? Cool. This one says Ninja Eli. Oops. And this one says Ninja Noah. Noah. And Thanks. look. What's this one say? Ninja Mom. Ninja River. It's for your little brother. He's going to be a ninja too. Cool. Now you guys going to be ninjas. Let's see some ninja moves. Oh. <laughs> Whoa! Cool! Oh! Cool! Ninja! 